Hi, good evening to those of you joining us. Just going to give uh, people a few minutes to come into the room. Um, there's quite a lot of interest in the event this evening, which is fantastic. We're delighted that you're able to join us this evening, um, our panel from, from IADT and beyond. Um, this is our uh, one of our special events in celebration of International Women's Day. Um, we're looking at the area of women in computing and um, I'll shortly be handing over to our um, manager of um, equality, diversity and inclusion at IADT. As you know, um, IADT, we're one of the Institutes of Technology based in Dunleary and we're the only Institute of Technology actually in Ireland that specialises in the arts and creative technologies. And um, we're delighted that you've been able to join us this evening. Um, I know we probably have quite a diverse audience uh, coming on the call this evening. We had initially promoted the event primarily to school, so I imagine there's probably a number of you who may be uh, students at second level, but I know uh, this topic has very broad appeal, so you're all very welcome. Um, unfortunately, we can't see you on the call, even though you can see us, so I think we're all kind of getting used to having to communicate in these kinds of fora. Um, but like like all of these uh, platforms, you're very welcome to interact with us. In fact, we'd love to get questions um, as we go through the session. You can just pop them on there. I'll keep an eye on those in, in the background and we'll come to them towards the end of the session. So um, I'm going to hand over mm -hmm. now to Claire, uh, who's going to host the session for us this evening. Mm -hmm. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Claire, as Michelle said, and I am IADT's Equality, Diversity and Inclusion Manager. And I'm really, really delighted to have you here on International Women's Day. And I want to wish everyone a, a happy International Women's Day. Um, and I hope you're going to enjoy the next hour. So we have a really, really good uh, packed panel um, to speak about women in computing, but uh, computing more generally in a career, in careers and education, and also our creative computing program at IEDT. So there's going to be three panels, um, uh, about 10 minutes each, um, one with current IDT students in computing. Um, that is going to be uh, Claire O'Brien, who's a third year student, and Connor Weldon, uh, who's in second year. Um, we'll then have 10 minutes with four of our amazing graduates, the graduates of our computing courses over the years, and these are early career um, uh, in their field. Um, we have Sarah Dennis, who is an experienced um, uh, design manager at Verizon Connect and graduated from the Institute in 2012. So she's nearly 10 years uh, now um, out in the world. We have Clara Halpin, who is production engineer at Intel and graduated from us in 2016. Amy Marr, web developer at Qualtrics, who uh, graduated in 2017, and Silva Kalka, uh, front-end developer at Mirabeau, and she graduated in 2018. And we'll then have a panel with experts, um, computing career experts, and those who are late career. Uh, Richard Archbold, who was VP Business Systems at Intercom, and Richard previously worked at Facebook, Amazon, and Aircom, so has a kind of a wide breadth of, of experience in this area. Donica O'Mahony, who is a secondary school guidance counsellor, uh, runs a, a number of education kind of related podcasts, including a, a Leaving Cert guidance podcast and owner of O'Mahony Careers, and will give a good perspective, I think, from second level. And, and how we can, I suppose, uh, uh, try to, to better achieve gender balance of, of female students going into our computing courses. And finally then, Anne Wright, who is a lecturer in computing in IDT. She has been in that role since 2002. Um, she was previously program chair of the BSc in psychology, and she has worked in industry for a number of years. So from 1997 to 2002, she was software um, developer in industry. And you've already just met Michelle, who Michelle Murphy, who is our school's liaison officer. So that that's that's the panel. Um, so I'm going to go straight into and just to say, sorry, there will be time for Q and A after. And after the Q and A, I will ask the panel to come back and give, I suppose, kind of a short um, a, a short briefing or short statement um, or a piece of advice that they'd like to give. So I'm going to go straight into our panel with our IEDT um, graduates, and that, as I've said, is Claire O'Brien and Connor Weldon. So if Claire and Connor would like to, to, to unmute, um, the rest of the panelists at this point, if you want to turn off your, your, your camera, you, you can. Um, and I can see Claire and Connor. 
So uh, I might start with, with Claire, um, I suppose, as a current third year student. Claire, can you give us, I suppose, a bit of an insight into what were your favourite subjects in secondary school and what subjects best prepared you, do you think, for college? Um, I have to say my favourite subjects, I think, was probably music and physics. I loved physics. It was probably the only science I could actually put up with, nearly. But um, I would say the best ones for preparing me for it were like... Um, Honestly, like maths is important. I felt like it was a little bit important for it, but I think it's more the problem solving end of maths. Like people concentrate on needing to get like a H1 in maths. You don't need a H1 in maths for doing well in like computer science. Um, a lot of the big maths things can be done for you with a small program nearly now. So it's um, definitely learning problem solving skills across the board on how to figure out something like with physics as well. Like just a lot of that kind of, um, figuring out how to sort a problem out in multiple ways, how to like find out where the issue is happening and then figuring it out from there. So another subject that actually helped me was metalwork that I did from first to third year, which was basically building something. So figuring out how to build it, what's going wrong, what isn't working, and kind of it runs the same way. So it's a lot of that more than anything else that would help you. It's like more problem, like a little bit of maths can help, but if you don't, if you do ordinary level math, it's like, don't let that deter you from going into computer science. Kind of. I think that's a really good point. And I think I think a lot of students, some students, I think, may fear that without that H1 in maths, and as, as you've really clearly put forward, there are skills you can develop, Claire, in your in your degree program. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, Connor. Connor, same question to yourself, Connor, who's a, a second year a student in, in creative computing. What were your favourite subjects in school? And again, what best prepared you to take on this course in IDT? My favourite subjects would probably be geography and German. I was a fan of languages and you know, both have nothing to do with computing, though, so <laughs> they don't really follow me on. But um, I don't know. I didn't really in my college. I went to uh, sorry, my second year. I went to an all boys secondary, but we didn't really have metalwork or woodwork or any tech studies, which you probably usually see. So I kind of went into college with a blank slate. I didn't have any prior experience, or, but even then, I found that the lectures were very helpful. Where you start, everyone starts from the same position, whether you've known nothing or you know everything. You're all just kind of working your way up bit by bit. So I don't think I was, I didn't feel like I was left behind at all for missing those or for not doing those compared to some of the other students. Um, I do agree with Claire in a sense that in a maths, you kind of need it, but it's also not very important. Like once again, an ordinary level maths is just as good. It's only basic and only used for certain aspects. Okay, thank you. And I think I think what you've said about, you know, coming in with a blank slate, I think one of the, the lovely things about college is being able to come in with that blank slate and kind of, you know, being able to open yourself up to, to, to learning lots of new skills, isn't it, Connor? Yeah. Can, can I ask you both the two, um, you know, and I might start with Connor this time, um, what advice would you give to, to, to students that are thinking or hoping to come in to study computing, whether that's your, the specific course we have in IDT or computing studies more generally? Any piece of advice you'd give? Um, once again, or don't or stress about... Or to anyone starting... Sorry, go on. Yeah, sorry. I was just saying, don't, don't stress about coming in. If, thinking that you need to be good at one aspect or another, you're taught whether you want to do the programming or the design, you kind of have the best of both. And you can see and develop which one you actually want to go into. There's nothing, no prior experience really needed. You shouldn't worry about it. Yeah. Okay, I think that's great advice. Again, it's both allowing people to come in with a blank slate, isn't it? And, and, and building up mm -hmm. and learning what, what they're interested in. Claire, the same question to yourself. And piece of advice you'd give to people coming in to study computing or maybe people starting you know we may have leaving cert students on this call to people coming in to start their third level journey and um, more generally I would definitely say like don't worry I mean I tell you that like it's like you start at a very like low level and you build yourself up and lecturers are there to help you but as well as that like if you do want to look online for computer programming information there's so many 
different free online tutorials stuff that can help you or even make you realize if you want to actually do it because i know myself i had friends who joined cola dojo and realized that that was not what they wanted to do which did help them as well <laughs> so it can go either way and on definitely on top of that like if you don't don't feel that you need to know a lot going in don't need to don't force yourself to like learn stuff before you go in i happen to know stuff before i went in and i didn't need it it was it did help me at the beginning obviously made it slightly easier but you definitely don't you don't need any prior knowledge and to people as well that might be thinking about even they might not have it down now but they might think about going into future there's also so many aspects of going into computers you do not need to go to college for it if you don't get the points in august for it don't worry about it as well there are the one thing i've realized from taking a year out and everything is that there is five different ways to get in even and as well as that go to every open day no matter if you think you're going to go to that college or not go into that open day sit in those lecture halls figure out what you like doing because i hate lecture halls i realize that by going to all my open days <laughs> <laughs> And it, it's, it's a lovely time of a lot of your life to, to be in. There's no doubt about it when you're trying to decide uh, your future and looking yeah. at your different options. The last thing I'm going to ask the two of you, um, and I'll move on to the next panel, but we will be coming back to Claire and Connor later if anyone has questions. I'm thinking particularly of any leaving certs or maybe parents on the call. Um, what is the favourite thing, your, your favourite thing about the course you are currently doing at IDT, whether it's a particular module, a particular assessment, a skill, a lecturer, what would you say, Claire, is your favourite thing about the course? Um, my favourite thing, I'd say, is what I've learned about web development specifically. The We're doing Laravel framework this year, which is basically just a big framework for building uh, applications. And I like how much I've learned down that aspect, because I read the lecturers who teach it as well. All the lectures are helpful, but I specifically like one lecturer who has been very, very helpful for me from first year and has really, really made me really, really, I want to be a web developer. And I appreciate that. So that's definitely probably the best thing. Okay, great. And Connor, same to yourself, your favorite thing about the course. Um, I love how everything kind of links, whether I'm doing stuff in game development or design, or just database. I love how it all kind of can be integrated into one another. Like I, for my project this year, I did a 3D game and I worked using 3D objects in Unity and stuff. And I was able to implement those 3D objects into my website for a clothing website. So I could spin the t-shirt around in 3D. And I just love how everything kind of linked together. And I'll just kind of, you can see what the goal is in the end. You're not just blindly going through you know where, where to start, where to end, and I really enjoy that. Great, well, thank you to Connor and Claire, um, our, our first panel. Um, and as I say, Connor and Claire will be back later uh, for the sum up and for some questions. So I'm now going to invite our early career. Um, so we're going from students, uh, we're moving into early career. Um, and these are our IADT graduates, Sarah, Clara, Amy, and Silva, who I'll ask now to turn on their, their cameras. Um, and uh, similarly, I have a, a couple of questions um, for you all. Um, I think I'll start because she's first on my, my screen uh, with Clara. Clara, what have been the most interesting part um, of your job or your career to date, do you think? And you may need to unmute yourself. Sorry. <laughs> you grant perfect we're getting used to this um yeah so um as you said i work in intel um and i guess i just kind of need to give a bit of background as to what my job is for you to understand the kind of projects i work on so um i work by the time um the chip the computer chip gets to us we're testing it so it's the very end of the line um, and i'm very fortunate to work with um all the different factories intel factories across the world so and um, there's some in America, China, Israel. Um, and I guess my projects then involve a lot of tracking the chips as they move around the world and um, where they are and where they're due to test. Um, so my most recent project that I worked on, um, I basically created a, a web app, a, a dashboard, um, so that each test site around the world can see all their different products on their floor and um, where they are, how much time they've left to test. 
Um, and I was very fortunate in that I was allowed to use whatever platforms I wanted and whatever coding languages I wanted. Um, like, so for, for example, some engineers prefer to use like C++, um, whereas I was lucky enough to work with Python. Um, and so this dashboard then is used by management to review our targets. Um, but as I said, yeah, so it's, it's really exciting to work with other people in the world. And um, we've had people from the other factories over to meet them. Um, and it's great to learn about the different cultures. Great, fantastic. Um, and you you graduated in 2016, Clara, didn't you? So you're you're only what, five five years out um, out of IDT. Um, yes. Yeah. Same question to Sarah, um, who's in uh, Verizon Connect. Sarah, I suppose maybe tell us a little bit about your role first, like Clara, and then is there any particularly interesting aspect of the job? Yeah, so when I left IDT, I actually left to be uh, an engineer. So I originally started out coding, similar to Clara, um, and I kind of decided it wasn't for me. I just like I enjoyed the course and everything like that. But we had one module, which was user experience design. And 10 years ago, that was such a tiny thing. It wasn't the way it is now today. Um, and I pivoted. I completely changed and went into design. And I've worked in like Ryanair and and a number of other places and I'm currently in Verizon Connect so we look after um, telematics so we track vehicles and assets like trailers and stuff like that and my current project I'm working on is dash cams so the cameras you have in your vehicles but my role as a design manager and um, I've worked my way up from a junior designer to a manager over the past 10 years so basically my job is to find problems that we can make money off. That's pretty much it, but also improving the user experience, the experience people have with products. So you can think of that experience you have opening an Apple product or a product that you love. That's the thing that I'm in charge of creating that experience that you have. And um, so, yeah, like the Dashcam product we're working on right now is really interesting. It's, you know, it's exciting to see people using my product that I've actually designed. Um, and again, I didn't do art in secondary school. I have no artistic background whatsoever. It's kind of going back to what Claire was saying earlier in the and um, the current students, which is like problem solving. So um, design is probably my second skill. And um, every day it's me facilitating people to have a conversation around solving a problem. And um, that's working with men and women across the world and day to day is kind of what I do. So yeah. It's fantastic. I think, Sarah, you make a very good point, no more than the previous speakers around, you know, when you're in your leaving search year, you know, you, you feel as if you're maybe a little bit restricted, but you have your whole career to develop all of these different yeah, skills, you know? Exactly. And that's the great thing about the tech industry. It's so huge. Like we need HR in tech industry. We need business analysts in the tech industry. Like the course, um, I, it was a different name at the time, but the creative community, uh, computing course, you could walk out of that and be a business analyst, which is basically writing up business requirements. You know, it doesn't have to be always going in to be a programmer. And, th and that's what's so great about the course. It kind of gives you a bit of taste of different things. So, yeah. That diversity is very exciting. Amy, same question to yourself. If you could tell us a little bit about your role as a web developer and again, some particularly interesting uh, things uh, from your, your career to date or anything you'd like to highlight about your role. Yeah, so um, hi, I'm Amy. Um, I've been with my current company Qualtrics for about three and a half years, uh, the longest job I've ever held, yay. <laughs> and um, I'm a web developer and I'm the only web developer outside of our main offices in Utah. So uh, everybody else works there. I'm the only one outside of that. So I'm kind of very used to having to communicate through Zoom, through everything with my teammates. And um, I'm the only girl on my small team of four people, um, which, uh, you know, it's it's great. I, I, I don't mind it at all. I've gotten very much used to it. Um, and some interesting things currently I'm working on. Um, we would use my company would usually do very big um, physical events. And due to the pandemic, we can't do that. We were going to have a really big event just uh, last year, 
it was going to have the killers at it. It was going to have um, the previous year it had Barack Obama and we were going to have so many big speakers and everything like that. And then we had to cancel it all very last minute. So we're kind of trying to pivot and do a lot more virtual uh more virtual events at the moment and I am in charge of the website that we are kind of putting everything onto making sure that it looks good and that it works for the user um so it's very exciting very interesting and I'm learning so many new things as I go through fantastic and Silva, uh, lastly, um, could you tell us a little about your role and, and again, anything particularly interesting um, that you do? Yes, so I am working as a front-end experience developer uh, in the Netherlands uh, for a company that is a, a digital agency. So what that means is that uh, me and my team go and work on different projects uh, every few months. So there is uh, a lot of projects that are different and I get to learn uh, different companies and the way they work. And I think what I like the most is that uh, I am the connector between different roles uh, because uh, from IATT I got the knowledge of computing but also user experience. And I can easily talk with other designers and uh, design the interface with them. Then I go and talk with the backend developers. Uh, we make the technical solution to a problem. And then in the end, I am the one that makes the visual uh, interface that users can interact with. Fantastic. So the four of you have all got really exciting, diverse careers. And I suppose you all, your journey all started in that way uh, from coming through IDT or, or from coming through uh, the, the IDT um, uh, experience and graduating. And I'm also going to ask just before I finish up this particular panel, um, if you, if it was just brief, a brief uh, couple of sentences, what advice would you give to yourself? If you could now go back and you were just starting out in your in your studies in IDT and in your career, what piece of advice would you give to yourself if you could go back? Kira. Clara, sorry, yeah. I don't know what you think. my eyesight is so bad. Clara. <laughs> um, yeah, I think for me, um, especially when I was in secondary school, I used to panic, well, I need to have this subject. And as the previous panelists have already kind of spoken to, um, kind of panic that I'd need to have this these subjects or um, these grades, certain grades. And I think, especially with tech, as, as the other panelists have said, there's so many options. Um, and it, you don't need to necessarily be strong at certain subjects because there's so many. And as you go along in your career and in your education, you can specialize in um, things that maybe you're stronger or you've more um, passion for. So I don't think there, there's any real need to worry about getting certain grades and the likes of maths or any of those kind of subjects. OK, thank you. Uh, Sarah. Yeah, kind of echoing a bit what Clara said there, um, it's kind of like. Uh, my biggest worry was like trying to have it all figured out. So knowing like this is the career I'm going to have for the rest of my life. Um, and it's not like that at all. And um, like the, the, the industry is forever changing. Like I'm a designer now. I could be something else in 10 years time. So that's the, the thing, like the industry is forever evolving and new role, new kinds of jobs come up and old jobs leave. And you're just, and you're just constantly learning as well. So like, that's the other thing, like learning just doesn't stop in college. Like you're learning on the job, you're learning what you like. And as Clara said, like specializing, you'll find a niche that you're really into um, and not to worry about secondary school because it, like literally once you get into college nobody talks about it again nobody asks about your points or your grades like it's just about getting into a college and finding a subject you're reasonably passionate or interested in um, and don't be afraid to like pivot uh, either like if you're if you're not feeling a career path that you've taken in the tech industry there's there's always a back door somewhere and, and you don't always have to go back to college to do that either that's a really nice thing about the industry too so that's it great amy so one thing I would say is uh, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Uh, you learn a hell of a lot more when you fail than when you succeed. It makes sense. <laughs> I swear it makes sense. Um, and also when you're applying for jobs, even after college or even before college, don't worry if you don't fill 100% of the criteria. 
you know, as um, I read a study at some point that said that women usually don't apply for positions if they don't fill a certain number of criteria, whereas men would apply for that just straight away. So what I would say is don't be afraid if you don't feel like you are not ready, because if you never get out of your comfort zone, you'll never find a new comfort zone. <laughs> Great, very good piece of advice. And Sil <clears throat> Silva, Silva. Uh, uh, yes, I think uh, when I was graduating from college, I really wanted to put a label of myself. So uh, say I am backend developer or front end developer or a designer, but I think that's very unnecessary and you should just build as many skills as you can. And with time and few years in the career, you can decide then and see what you're passionate about the most great fantastic and look that really really good advice there um and i think any leaving cert students or school students listening into this they can see that they have and i'm sure you all agree they have a really really exciting pathway ahead of them don't they it's a really exciting time and your career can really go in, in many different uh, ways so thank you to our four uh, brilliant graduates and i'm going to they, they will uh, come back to join us um, later on at the end I'm now going to the last I suppose, section, I want to bring in industry and career and computing experts. Um, so I'm going to invite Richard, uh, Dunica and Anne to join us. So hello, um, uh, nice to see you. Um, Richard, I'm going to start with yourself. I know this is a topic that you are particularly passionate about and, and are working a lot on. And, you know, I suppose in recognition of International Women's Day and the computing and tech industries even to this present day are still very dominated and um, by men and Richard I would just ask you like what why do you think the tech industry needs more women and what difference do they make uh super question Claire thanks for uh thanks for letting me answer it um one of the things I've learned uh over my time in tech and uh, over my time working is that the um the more diverse a team uh is the more creative it is the more productive it is the friendlier and warmer and more supportive it is the longer people stay in it the less attrition you get uh and it's it, it, it's um yeah it's just that the the more diverse the more different perspectives and the more different backgrounds a team has everything becomes better and easier and it, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy <clears throat> and like one one of the most simple and easy things you can see when you look at a team is the is the jet is the is the gender distribution and right now i think there's like 20 25 percent of the, the uh tech industry in ireland it is um women and um uh, the um the rest is men and i think everybody is just realizing how much better diverse teams are and there's a huge appetite to try and uh, attract more more women into engineering or women into technology and yeah there's just this real uh wave of optimism and positivity and recognition that this is absolutely the way uh, the the way forward so this this is good business essentially and it's 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 good for industry I, I think absolutely it's good for industry but uh, I, I'm good for business but I do genuinely believe that even if it wasn't people would still be doing it there there, there is like a huge moral uh, code and mo moral compass there I'm a father of uh, twin, twin girls and you know you you actually want to build this environment that you would be excited and proud to have any of your kids join and feel like that that they're they're going to be well looked after so I think there, there very much is a moral thing here uh, that it is just a good human thing to do. But uh, having worked in companies where, where uh, they are more male dominated versus ones where there are a better balance of uh, men and women, uh, there, there's just no contest. Uh, once you see it and experience it yourself, you would never advocate for anything different and you would fight hard to try and build that diverse environment. 
absolutely. And some of the stories, I suppose, of the women, the early pioneering women in computing and the tech industry and so on have been coming to the fore in the past couple of years. I mean, Catherine Johnson, I'm not sure if people know, a uh, pioneering mathemat mathematician in NASA, for example, in the 60s. And they've made a film about her and her colleagues called Hidden Figures. But there's been, I suppose, a real emphasis, I suppose, on trying to achieve that balance and also trying to really celebrate the, the achievements of those women that have managed to break through uh, the moulds. So it's all very positive and really, really good to see that work um, ongoing. Donica, as a teacher, can I ask you, um, I suppose, you, you know, uh, you know, what would you recommend to encourage more female students to enter into, I suppose, computing degrees? Is there any any research you have undertaken or any particular tips or actions you think need to be done? So I did a good bit of research for this with my own six years. So I surveyed them to try and get into the psyche. So I teach in an all girls school in Stevens Green and I surveyed all the girls who were about close to 100 students. And the first question, of course, was how many of you or who has a, a IT course on their CEO form? And that came back as 8%. Uh, so it was very small uh, in, a, in, a, in, in quite a large school. And, and I think that's the norm across the board. But I wanted to get more into the psyche and what would encourage girls, what they understand, what they misunderstand. And there's so many, like Claire, you'd mentioned there about pioneering women. But even women in today's day and age, like we have uh, Whitney Wolf, who is the youngest first female self-made billionaire who started Bumble, the CEO of YouTube, the CEO of Yahoo, uh, or, or female. Um, you know, even closer to home here, Dr. Jessica McCarthy is the head of engineering in Google, and uh, she has a computer science degree from Maynooth University. So. You don't have to go back too far. You don't have to go too far around the world to see pioneering women uh, in the computer industry. And I think part of my role and school's role is to show uh, girls this, you know, that we have some of the top computer scientists in the tech industry are leading this industry. And then there's areas that, you know, as we went on, the girls were, were conscious about what field they can work in. Uh, and again, it, it's it's my job uh, as a guidance counselor to say, look, we need computer scientists in climate change. We need computer scientists for finance industry, for the medical industry. Look at the COVID-19 tracker app that was developed recently, probably all developed by computer scientists. And it's something that these girls really don't reflect on that much. You know, where did this come from? Who invented this? But every day they're using something got to do with computer science. And I suppose then as a guidance counselor, I would want to impart the knowledge that uh, Google with their generation, Google scholarship, Intel, Huawei, all have scholarships, undergraduate scholarships for girls who do degrees in IT. And the Nocton scholarship is another one of those as well. And these are 5,000 euro a year for the duration of your studies to try and encourage girls. So mm -hmm. that's again, another um, a way to get girls in. Um, you know, you're looking at computer science was brought in as a leave and search subject only a couple of years ago. We're going to bring it into my school actually next year. And again, this should encourage girls to take on uh, degrees in computer science and computing. Maybe a taster in transition year, they might decide they really love it and then go on and try it. So as schools and as guidance counselors, there's so many ways we can make a degree in computing and make girls more aware of uh, what that has to offer. Fantastic. A lot of, I suppose, ongoing work and, as you say, some really, really positive trailblazers, including in the Irish um, field, as, as you rightly point out. And can you tell us, I suppose, so Anne Wright has said this is lecture in computing in IDT um, and, and would have lectured, I'm assuming, all of our graduates uh, that we've just that we've just spoken to. Um, and could you tell us a little bit about the creative computing degree in IDT? And maybe you want to just maybe speak a little bit more generally to IDT. I think you're on mute.
think you're still muted. It's a, for, for those who are joining us, you probably can't see this, but it's a it's it's a slightly different system to Zoom. No, you're still muted. Don't know. I'll, I'll go back to I might go back to Richard um, Ed, just with anything another question. I mean, Richard, I might ask you the same <clears throat> the same question I asked to Donica, but maybe from I suppose the perspective of industry. What step? I mean, there has been a number of steps achieved, but what other kind of very suppose, concrete actions or practical things need to be done? Do you think to get a better gender diversity in the industry? Um, I think uh, I, I think as Donica and maybe some of the other folks earlier had had talked about the, the really the breadth of opportunities there are inside of the IT uh, uh, kind of umbrella from product managers or designers or analysts or researchers to uh, engineers to uh, pro program managers, the, the kind of like breadth of uh, opportunities that exist under the umbrella of IT are, are huge. And uh, so like the likes of people who've never done never done like even any serious maths before but are interested in psychology or problem solving or art or uh and any type of kind of creative discipline no. it, re oh, uh, sure. it uh, really takes the village these days in order to build a, a tech product and that that kind of like melt melting pot of all different people's experiences and interests is um, one of the more interesting things. So just really not being focused on computer science or on um, mathematics uh, as like any sort of an anchor or entry point. And, you know, even some of the best people in my company have never done a, a computer science degree. They trained as like literally as a baker and came into this then and said, you know, I'm actually a, a, creative problem solver i can help you build great things in technology and they they were right great fantastic absolutely that that diversity and i suppose of all of the different peak different backgrounds of people who have managed to come into the industry is really worth i suppose recognizing and celebrating um and we could hear you for a, a minute there again i don't know if Anne has left us or, or not if she wants to can she turn our camera again maybe she's gone she might come in and come out again We'll just see if she comes back. Um, Michelle, is there any questions um, in for our panelists um, at the moment? Hi, Claire. Um, Hi. Just, just a couple of um, comments there um, coming in, more just people joining in the conversation. So I might just share them with you. Tech is built for women the too. Women. They need yeah, to I'm be going to hang up on you. software and UX design okay. process. Sorry, we could hear we could hear Anne there. I think could we hear Anne? In the yeah, there? yeah. Apologies. <laughs> I'm like, no, yeah, that's a great thing, isn't it? Um, talking about you know the the computing lecture and everything goes kaput. Everything was working oh, fine, yeah. and I I've but, done nothing yeah. since then. Yeah. Anyway, so, always the way that the realities of virtual working. So we were just going to go to the questions, Anne. But now that you're back with us, I think we'll come into you, come to you, I suppose. So my initial question, could you tell us a bit about the creative computing degree at IDT and maybe speak to IDT more generally for, for prospective students listening in? OK, so, um, yeah, well, if I was talking about IDT in general, um, I mean, the first thing that comes across is it's a really cool campus. It's a really and that's just, you know, basically it's not just a campus, the college. It's such a diverse range of um programs that are in IADT and I know from different alumni including Rich that's on the call here at uh, that the programs are absolutely second to none they're really up to date and we're really involved with industry probably because we're a small campus we have individual um individual relationships with different industries so we are ensuring that any programs we come out with are absolutely top notch that they are what industry wants whether that industry in this case as we're talking here is computing and technology or you probably know that we have the national film school here everybody that um 
if it's the film industry and you've got all the different creative and cultural industries as well. Um, so, yeah, we have that really good relationship, all the staff in IODT, with the people in different industries. Then in relation to creative computing, I mean, the, the, the planar logistics is a four year program. We have very small um, class sizes, which is really good. I'd even, you know, from a young student's point of view, you know, secondary school kids wondering the, you know, the class rapport that, you know, making friends and so on within the actual class is brilliant because you're in that small class. I can honestly say as well, the dedication to the staff, because it's a small class size, I know all the students. I know if they're missing and I'm able to reach out to them and help them through and so on. So that dedication from the staff, it comes, it, it's across the board. Every staff member that I know in IDT has that absolute dedication. We're all there years. I don't think there's any newbies in there anymore. And it is because of this, um, just a, a fantastic feel, a fantastic place to work. And hopefully for the students, what I hear, but you can see all my st old students coming back and volunteering for this panel, that we have that great relationship. But it is also wonderful if you need an extra helping hand and so on, you have it. So then from the point of view, the computing program itself, creative computing being just that, it is the creative computing. And the idea that um, Sarah and a few other people touched on, pivoting your, you know, pivoting in your career, turning from whether you're a programmer to UX to design or something completely different. Again, um, I, I went from being a software developer to, you know, being a lecturer. And I can tell you now, I don't lecture in the subject that I learned in college. We, you'll always be changing and so on. But the creative computing program, we kind of we have different strands. It's not that you're choosing different topics the whole time, but we we ensure that you the students have the technical subjects, the programming and all those kind of technical subjects. Um, yeah, there's a tiny bit of maths, but we we say you, you need past maths and that's it. And the reason behind it is so that you you know you're okay at problem solving and learning how to problem solve. The program, the modules, then we've got your technical subjects. You have your design subjects, so your web design, your interface design, and then you have considering the user. So with this whole thing, UX was mentioned a few times there, and it's become such a big thing now. The creative computing program, it prepares you to be a programmer. It prepares you, you know, to be a web designer, you know, designing interfaces and so on, but also prepares you to know the user. And that user can be, you know, anybody, depending on if, a piece of software, whatever it is. So that's it in a nutshell. I'm sure I could talk about creative computing for as long as you, if somebody stays online to listen to me. But, uh, <laughs> we'll see if there's any more questions in relation to the program. There's, I'll answer there's, that. A, there's one or two comments and questions before I, get, I bring Michelle back in and say that Richard has said in the in the comments to us, he's just said the teaching styles are very inclusive, collaborative and modern in IDT and that the mix of creativity and problem solving skills combined with the tech focus is unique in his experience across Irish colleges. So it is a unique experience for our students. And as you said, right, Leanne, the fact we're a smaller campus with a small class group means that you get to know your lecturers very well. Um, and yeah, a big benefit, I think, of, of IDT. So, Michelle, I'm going to bring you back in now, um, if you would like, and uh, just to let us know, um, are, are there any questions or comments for the panel? Yeah, um, hi, Claire, and hi to everyone on the call. Um, yeah, a couple of other comments by, by way of um, just ad adding to the conversation. So I think I was uh, just mentioning that one. First of all, tech is built for women too. They need to be heard in the software and UX design process. Uh, women have a unique perspective and empathy for the software and app user. I don't know, Anne, maybe you have a comment on that. I would imagine that's in relation to the whole area of UX design. Apologies, I don't see that there. I'm just saying, well, okay. can you read it back out to me there, Michelle? Um, but maybe, maybe we might come back to that one when, when we're speaking with our graduates, because I think there's a couple of graduates working in that area, Claire. Yes. 
There is, um, yes. I mean, I might get Richard's comment on one particular. So Marion McDonnell has made the point that tech is built for women. They need to be heard in the software and UX design process, and they have a unique perspective. I mean, Richard, is there is there evidence to suggest that having women involved in the design of software is impacting on the outputs, essentially, of what's coming out? Do women bring a different perspective into design at very early stages? Uh, I think they certainly bring a... a, a holistic perspective and round out the perspective like we we have done many studies and have seen empirically that design teams that have a balanced uh, gender mix that their their ultimate end product will will actually be better received but by um but by, by customers but i think it's interesting and like on average 50 percent of your users are women as well so like you, you know you actually want their perspective when you were designing the product but I think you can see, like, I look at things like the iPhone and I look at, you know, this massive big iPhone that, that fits in a man's hands easily, but doesn't often fit in a woman's hands. And you, and, and you see people creating these, like, wonderful little uh, uh, things that you could attach onto the back of your phone. That, like, that's an example of where I'm going, you know, I wonder what actually was the gender balance on, on that iPhone design team and where they, like, who are they optimizing for here? And, and, and so like sometimes you see things in the real world where, where you go, um, you know, I think that design team could have could have actually benefit from a little bit more gender balance on it. Yeah, myself and Anne only had a discussion last Friday. I had been reading a piece of research about Alexa and Siri and how when these were initially designed, because they were designed by males, that her response, that the response of Siri and Alexa was, you know, was very gendered and they've had to go back and change that and be more inclusive. <laughs> yeah. um, so, Michelle, if you'd like to come back, maybe tell any other questions. And at this point, too, I think I'm going to bring back all of our panelists in together now, our students and our graduates as well, um, if you would like. So, Michelle, if you've any others. Uh, well, we have a comment here from Louise Glynn, who's one of our other lecturers, and she was picking up on Connor's point there, where Connor had said that he's uh, one of his favourite subjects was doing a foreign language. And um, Louise's view is that she thinks learning a foreign language is actually really helpful with adapting to learning programming languages. So that's just a, a point uh, from Louise. And also uh, just to mention as schools liaison officer, often I get asked, are there particular uh, uh, subjects that you would need to have done in your leaving search? And I was inter interested in what Dunnock had to say there about, you know, it's wonderful to see that uh, particularly all girls schools are now considering uh, putting computing on to the as an option for the leaving search but just yeah. to say for anyone on the call that it's not a requirement to to study um creative computing at IDT um so just to reassure people that they don't have to have prior experience or or have done it for the leaving search okay and uh any other questions um at this point Michelle or will I can I will I go back to panel? go ahead go ahead go Claire Okay, so I might just go back to the panel again, and I think I'm going to ask each of you, um, I suppose, maybe one or two questions, or if you'd like to maybe kind of follow up or, or kind of uh, maybe react to some of those comments or, or discussion. But that initial point, um, I suppose, about, um, about the importance of having women uh, in software design and in UX, I might go to our graduates on this, Sarah, um, Clara, Amy, and Sil Silva. I mean, do either of you have any any kind of reaction to that? I suppose about the, you feel is there a you know a different perspective that women make at that early stage of design? Um, from my here? point of view, Great. definitely. Um, so I work on a predominantly male team. Um, so like nearly ninety percent of the team I work on is men, and in, and even the design team it's about 50, 60 percent men. And um, I definitely think women have, I totally agree with Richard, it's like this holistic overview, like women are organizers, it's in our DNA, we plan ahead, we kind of think about all the people around us and how that's impacting and and there's definitely times where I feel like you, you definitely need a woman's perspective on things and particularly when you're dealing with like empathy and, and feelings, like women are just a little bit more attuned to that kind of stuff. And I think also on another side of it is from leadership as well, and um, so there's a lot of men in leadership um, in the tech industry and it is getting better. It's taking um, its time. There's not enough women in there to, to really make a dent in it. But I think even from a leadership style 
as well that women have that opportunity there to kind of shape that space and, and it makes such a, a difference because it brings a different style of leadership which is in your classic um, kind of male approach that you get which is you know women always have to act like men to keep up with the men and you're starting to see that now where women are are starting to be authentic and, and be themselves and and just bring their own spin on things which is really important to make an inclusive industry so yeah Absolutely. Um, I don't know if Claire, Clara or Silva would like to come in on your experience of this, I suppose, as women in the industry. And I suppose maybe the, do you feel that women bring in a unique perspective to your work? Anyone wants to come up? No? Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, I think from, from my perspective, um, like as Sarah was saying, there's, it's very male dominated industry. Um, and there is progress being made. I think from my perspective, I after um, I completed my undergraduate degree, I went on to UCD to do a master's in computer science. Um, and there was a hundred people in that course and there was about 10 girls, um, which was to me was a bit shocking. I, I wasn't really expecting that. Um, but then obviously as I moved on to Intel, it's still like I could be in a meeting of 20 people and I'm the only woman there. Um, but I do think that it's definitely been more encouraged um, and they are looking for that other perspective. Um, as Sarah said, um, women are a lot more kind of organized and they do definitely hold a different perspective um, that is valuable in that space. Okay, great. Anyone else of the graduates or the students want to come in on that particular point or? No, okay. Um, Michelle, do we have any other questions? I have one other for all members of the panel. Before I do that, is there any other questions um, for a response? Just, just one here for Donica, and it's um, what more can be done to encourage secondary school girls to consider careers in computing? Yeah, so as I was saying earlier, um, everybody needs to, to take ownership of, of this, you know, making girls aware of uh, leading women in the industry of scholarships available and I suppose for parents as well your parents often um, they often ask where will, will this lead for my daughter the higher education authority brought out a report in 2018 that said IT graduates are the highest paid graduates of any other graduate um, in the in, in any industry and that 80 percent of, of IT graduates find work within a few months of graduating. Um, so all of these things have to be made aware, not alone to students, but to parents as well. And it's up to the school to get the likes of Richard in there to talk to the students and, and a few other the graduates here to say, this is what's available. Um, and it's a whole new world. And it's not the stereotype uh, that you think it is. Okay, great. Any others, Michelle? That's it for the moment, Claire. Thank you. For the moment. Can okay. I, can I just, sorry, I was going to I was going to add in there as Donica was mentioning um parents, and I just wanted to slightly add to that. I was listening to another webinar about from a lady in Trinity that had done a bit of research with her computing students, and they were she was talking about the unconscious bias of parents. So if there's any parents listening now, just, just to be aware of that, that um, and I, she did mention fathers. I don't want, you know, it's not finger pointing as such, but the, the fathers are more likely to encourage their sons to get into the, these tech subjects, into computing and whatever, you know, other technical kind of subjects. While there are little girls, and I include my own husband in this, his little girl is his angel, his little girl is, you know, and so on. But not to encourage them into what may be perceived as, you know, a male industry. But, you know, the women can do it and can do it just as well differently, of course, and we need that difference. So please, parents, if you're if you're on here, if you're listening, um, do encourage your daughters, do encourage all your kids, of course, but um encourage your daughters to stand out and to take that computing course if that's what they really want to do that's all clear i think that's a very important message particularly for international women's day and um you know that we 
we don't put up any barriers um, or challenges for, for women and girls in any careers. And yeah. the same with boys and, and with, with men. I'm going to return to every member of the panel, um, I suppose, before we close out. And I'd like you all, and you can keep it very brief um, if you would like, um, but I'd like you all to just think about what has been, you know, all of the careers we've seen to date are all very diverse and they're different and they've led people down very different and, and interesting paths. And I would just like people to think about what has been the most fun or rewarding aspect of your career or studies to date um, in computing. So because Dunica is first on my list and I can see him on my screen, I, I might start with you uh, and move to Richard and Anne. Um, so the most fun or rewarding thing you've done so far. So, so could you just repeat that again, Claire, sorry? Uh, what has been the most fun or rewarding uh, aspect of your career to date? Of my career? Well, well, the most fun or rewarding aspect was not knowing where I was ever going. I, I had never a, a plan set out. Um, everything kind of stumbled into place. And uh, I, I, I know uh, Sarah uh, said about girls being organised and having plans. I certainly had no plan of being a guidance counsellor or even a teacher. I literally stumbled into these careers. And that's what the most fun was, you know, not to plan something out, but let it happen for you. If computing is an area for you, let it happen. Go in, experience it. There's so many unique opportunities with a degree in IT that you can explore and will take you all around the world, which will be fun as well. Great. Thank you. Richard. Uh, I'd say the most rewarding thing has been earning a lot of money. To be honest with you, like te te <laughs> tech, tech is like one of the highest paid, disgustingly high, highest paid disciplines. And I feel really lucky to like doing something that that the industry rewards uh, really, really, really well. And like, like big tech is just one of the best uh, paying places around. And one of the most rewarding and, and one of the most fun things then is uh, tech is international. Like I've got to do so much traveling uh, all around the world as a result of uh, as a result of this. And you know, you go to San Francisco to work for a week, and then you take a week off and go traveling, or you or you you, you know you you uh, travel and uh, and uh, work and and explore at the same time. And you know, as I've got older, like my family has been like brought along and paid for by like different companies I've worked with. So it's like a, like it's inclusive. Uh, family oriented travel and then meeting people you know you get to meet such a breath of really interesting really smart uh, creative quirky uh, people like working under pressure and intensity together and you just form amazing relationships with people that last long after a job is finished and I've got friends all over the world now from uh, that uh, that uh, that I know I'll stay in contact with for, for forever so Money, travel, friends will be like the top three uh, things for me. Thank you, Richard. And that point about earning potential is, is important. <laughs> no doubt about it. Uh, uh, Anne. That's it. There's no tiptoeing around that, Richard. It is, it, is, it, is, it is important. And it's a question people probably didn't want to ask. Um, well, for me, when I worked in the industry, when I worked in industry, now it was many years ago, um, for me, it was to travel as well. It was it was really cool to travel, to go over to the likes of California, to Silicon Valley, meet such different people. You know, we our team was from loads of different places, from Texas. We had Indian people from India. Um, we had Canadians. We had, you know, and a lot of Californians and all meeting over there in California. So that was really cool part of the tech industry. From a teaching point of view, I think it. Well, actually, I'll tell you a, a tiny little story. Our, um, we have a grad show at the end of every year uh, where we have industry coming to see the grads um, work. Also, they invite their family and friends to come see their work and so on. So we tend to get to meet the parents and family members of our students. I was about to leave and I bumped into one of my students and he thought, he, he just, you know, let shout, you, yay, brilliant. I'm so delighted we got to see you. I was just saying to my parents, we want to introduce it to Anne Wright. With that, I thought I was, I was putting out my hand for a handshake. His mom actually hugged me. His mom hugged me and she says, thank you. Thank you for everything you have done for my son. And it really just hit home how much I love teaching. I love 
you know, yeah, it's a programming, but it could be it could be teaching a child how to tie their own shoelace or teaching a student how to program or their databases. And you guys know the type of subjects I teach. Um, it's just that rewarding feeling of knowing that you've instilled, you've inspired somebody else. And I will do it as long as I'm with IADT, which will be, you know, until I retire, I reckon. Great. And I'm going to, to wrap up and go to ask our question, same question of our graduates and our students about if you can give one example of a really fun or rewarding aspect of your career uh, to date. Um, Sarah. Yeah, so I think a couple of years ago, I got to work on the new product from scratch. We don't get to do very often. Um, unless you're a startup or something like that. Um, and it was the very first time I got to go to the States and do research. So I actually got to, to do customer research and follow people around all day long and watch what they were doing to kind of learn how they did their job. And, and this was for like a scheduling dispatch product. And we learned how like they were scheduling their jobs. They had this big giant board on the wall that they had to manually maintain and everything. And then three months later, we built uh, a digital software product that would help take this manual process into the, the digital space and actually getting to see my designs and my research influence and actually improve someone's life. I know it, it doesn't sound like it would, but these are people that are spending hours like manually scheduling jobs and you know not spending time with their family. So actually getting to solve problems for people to make their life better as, as kind of corporate as that Kind of project was it does make a difference to people's lives so getting to do projects like that where i'm actually making a difference and um, to people's lives i think that's the thing that i really love about ux design it's not and working with the engineers who code it as well so getting to work with all those people to deliver that project it's not just me it's like a real team effort you know you, you have a wide variety of people involved and so it's great like being part of a, a team and, and working towards a goal like that so that's probably my 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 favorite memory from my career today is that particular project so fantastic claire um i have to say i did mine's obviously short-lived i'm only in third year in, in yeah. college still but i had one internship opportunity after first year of college in ericsson and working there and actually getting to experience actual teamwork kind of thing within the agile environment and getting to see other people work. And as well, I, there was a few women on the group as well, which really helped kind of, it was like a really about nearly half and half women and men, which was rare for a lot of the other groups in, in the area. But I think what was really, really encouraging about that experience at the end of the month, they were actually like, they had a going away kind of thing for me. And I don't know why, but like that kind of made me feel like I'm, I'm where I kind of belong, I suppose. It kind of gave me a, like, okay, this is actually for me kind of thing. It kind of solidified me wanting to continue on, say that these people, I worked with them only for a month. I helped them out with stuff that they needed done and they actually appreciated it. And knowing you're appreciated for such a short amount of time and being told even, I was told by one of the managers that they would actually want me back again. It was just, I don't know how to describe it. It was about the nicest thing I think I've ever been told. And it was just so, it kind of gave me a little bit of a pick me up as well for whenever I, get bogged down by work some of that I remember that like I was in a place and I was appreciated and it really does help to keep me like going when I'm feeling like that I might it's might be getting overwhelming <laughs> it's all space for yourself there thank you Claire uh Clara yeah for me um I've always had a great interest in business um but I never wanted to do it in college because I never have the patience to learn all the theory. Um, so I'm very lucky that my job is kind of 50-50. I do a lot of business related stuff as well. And I think that's the great thing about um, computing as well. It's one of the rare disciplines where it's not only the obvious industries like tech and gaming and web development. It's also like anything you can think of like travel, finance, business, fashion, retail. They all need um, some level of computer science and computing. Um, so there's just so much opportunity to, in, to incorporate your other interests and passions into your career. Um, so Fantastic. Was... Thank you, Silva. Um, yeah, I think for me, it's uh, mostly the creative projects that I get to work on. For example, I was once building a data visualization for a company that sells soya beans from Brazil and sends it across the world. So I learned how the contracts between different soya bean sellers are made and I had to visualize it in a nice and cool way. 
And another thing that is special in my company is that every two weeks with other front-end developers uh, we meet and we share uh, the projects we worked on and we uh, give different presentations to each other to share the skills we have and we also support each other that way. Fantastic. Um, Connor, and I know Connor is a sec you're in second year, so but if you had any rewarding or fun experiences so far? Um, yeah, so similar to Richard and Anne, I know I'm only in second year, but so I haven't traveled abroad or anything, but the opportunities that come with the course are great. Like I've gotten to work with Trinity, the Royal Irish Academy of Music, and various other colleges and courses doing different projects outside of the college. And that to me was amazing to say the least. It's it's a finished product I can see, which nothing to do with my course. It's something I developed and other people around Ireland and stuff are seeing it. So that to me was really amazing to look back on. Fantastic. And mm -hmm. finally, Amy. So definitely most fun is traveling. Um I have been to Utah several times now for work um and utah is kind of becoming its own like silicon valley but you know just in utah instead and i've also been able to travel for different events uh with my marketing team i was able to go to paris madrid krakow for an office opening it's been brilliant and um definitely most rewarding is the fact that i could potentially buy a house as a solo applicant this year fingers crossed anyway <laughs> look that's fantastic and again all of your responses to show how diverse and exciting uh, at the field um is we're a couple of minutes over um so i apologize for that but thank you i suppose it just falls to me to thank everybody for all of our panelists for a fascinating and yes I just see a question there that I'd like to address that Neve, Neve Staines, I think the surname is. So during the course, are there many resources like libraries if there is a need to self-learn for further understanding of the material on the course? So um, yeah, the library has come along in leaps and bounds recently, Neve. And of course, as you can may guess, everything's online but the thing about having everything online is you have more than what's available within the library and we have so many different subscription services if you're considering the computing course but this will it's applicable to all programs idt have a wonderful subscription service to uh, 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 a service called linkedin learning and it has absolutely thousands of professional professionally developed courses online that will teach you i can just say absolutely anything like i i will i will always bring it out into the class to say okay you need to learn this programming language there you go there's the introduction there's the advanced program and so on on linkedin learning but there's anything from photography to film to using photoshop to programming to any different language and LinkedIn learning is very up to date so that's a fantastic resource that IEDT subscribe to every year so you'll have that available to you okay fantastic thanks Anne so thank you to all of our panelists I, for if I was in a, a physical room now I tell you to give them a round of applause but I'll ask you to do that virtually um, and thank you to everybody for sharing their time and their insights and we do hope it was of interest um, uh, particularly but exclusively to, to, to students who may be considering IDT uh, among their options and to their parents and teachers um, as well so before I let you go I don't know if Michelle our school's liaisons officer has anything uh anything to say um michelle just to finish up thank you claire yeah just final comment for me to say that if, if there's anyone on the call and you're interested in learning a bit more about our creative computing um offering at iadt we've been running a series of spotlight mm -hmm. sessions on all of our courses since the start of the year so you can see there i'm sharing my screen of the website we have a special event um at this a similar event to this on Thursday, the 25th of March, specifically on creative computing, and we'd love if you could join us. Great, thank you very much. And thank you to everybody again. Um, happy International Women's Day, and we hope you have a, a lovely evening. Bye. <clears throat>